power, deception, propaganda. A new book by James O'Keefe. Pre-order now at AmericanMuckRaker.com. I work at a pharmaceutical company. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Um, I just believe in research and science. Well, in this database, you came across a chain of emails discussing fetal tissue and the COVID vaccine. Vanessa Gelman, who works in Washington, D.C., is Senior Director of Worldwide Research. The question came up as an inquiry to our MedInfo group. They're asking, quote, did Pfizer make use of a cell line from an aborted fetus? They want you to leave out the highlighted part, which is the one or more cell lines with an origin that can be traced back to human fetal tissue has been used in laboratory tests associated with the vaccine program. And here we have your badge. You are an employee of Pfizer? I work at the McPherson, Kansas plant. Um, it's one of the biggest plants in the operation of Pfizer. We produce some of the most units. This message from Vanessa Gilman. From the perspective of corporate affairs, we want to avoid having the information on the fetal cell lines floating out there. We believe that the risk of communicating this right now outweighs any potential benefit that we could see, particularly with general members of the public who may take this information and use it in ways we may not want it out there. We have not received any questions from policymakers or media on this issue in the last few weeks, so we want to avoid raising this if possible. Wow. We believe that the risk of communicating this right now outweighs any potential benefit we could see. They ought to put that on American currency. Philip Dormitzer, Vice President, Chief Scientific Officer. These are not low-level people here. So you're showing us emails between the Vice President of Pfizer, the Senior Director of Worldwide Research, mm -hmm. about how to couch it a certain way because we would not want to tell the people that it can be traced back to human fetal tissue. Copying Vanessa Gelman, we have an approved answer to this question, the question being about fetal tissue. Mm -hmm which Vanessa can probably provide, H-E-K-2932. What does that mean, HEC cells? Uh, human embryo kidney cells, and okay. it was from experiment 293. They've used cells from aborted fetuses. Yes, And they don't cells. want the public to know that. Yes. That's staggering for society because of what you said, religious exemptions. Mm -hmm. And they're denying our religious exemptions at Pfizer. This is serious stuff you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're dealing with. These are, these are powerful people and a very powerful company. They're withholding knowledge on people's approval if they can consent or not. From Sarah Elizabeth Weiser, the principal scientist. Uh, she's just making sure, you know, uh, just be clear, you would like medical information to reply with the text in red below, including the highlighted section. Okay. Thanks again. And then they responded, responded with, with the, No, I would prefer that we do not use <laughs> the text in yellow. Um, they're being so deceptive in their emails, it's almost like it is in the final vaccine. It just made me not trust it. There was an issue with the FDA and... I heard something about they're doing some sort of tests in there with lights, but I'm not sure. And I said, in unoccupied rooms and in a group lead office? And he goes, well, the FDA is coming. I could not believe that they were blacking out windows down in our manufacturing rooms. We are told that you should be seen at all times, that we need to make sure that yeah. Um, we have high integrity and the, the rooms that are like this one where you can see my reflection, it's a group lead office mm -hmm. where they just do the paperwork for the batches. Mm. So why does that need blacked out? And why did you decide to come to Project Veritas? Because I felt it was the right thing to do. I feel like I have no one else to turn to when my own company won't be honest with me. What I was told to do was to trust Project Veritas and to go with you guys by lawmakers, by lawyers. Really. I was really genuinely traumatized and sickened from the things I saw and I needed to leave there. So I just took a leave of absence so that I could gather my thoughts and really kind of heal from this information. The extraordinary act of blowing the whistle on the company and publishing emails from their vice president is another step entirely. Are you, yeah. are you afraid of doing this? A little bit. I, I have faith that I'll be protected or whatever the outcome is is what it's supposed to be. So I, I'm at peace with it. I'm a little anxious on what they'll do or what they'll say, but it needs to be seen by the people because they're trying to get this to kids. And if they're being this deceptive about it, I don't feel comfortable being silent. The government doesn't want to show that the darn vaccine is full of shit. It needs to be a registry of the people who aren't vaccinated. That's sounding very germane. I'm gonna go door to door and stab everyone. Oh, it's just your booster shot. Don't get the vaccine. I didn't tell you no. She didn't want to take it because of her religious beliefs. She was coerced into taking it. They are not reporting because they want to 
Show it on the, the map. I want you to leave out the highlighted part, which is the one or more cell lines with an origin that can be traced back to human fetal tissue has been used in laboratory tests associated with the vaccine program. Why did you decide to come to Project Veritas? I felt it was the right thing to do. I feel like I have no one else to turn to when my own company won't be honest with me. I just didn't know who else to turn to. And here we have your badge. You are an employee of Pfizer? Yes. And where, where exactly do you work? I work at the McPherson, Kansas plant. It's one of the biggest plants in the operation of Pfizer. We produce some of the most units. We handle the product daily. Uh, quality gets to see the process from fill to pack. So we see everything. How long have you worked there? Uh, going on 10 years, but I've been in quality for five. Tell us about what you saw that concerned you. Accidentally, honestly, was going to do a Google search on our uh, computer and plant and I must have clicked the wrong box on our homepage and searched in our database instead. And I saw reports of what I had searched for and I'd click them and then I realized that they were internal documents on our internal Pfizer database. Well, in this database you came across a chain of emails discussing fetal tissue and the COVID vaccine. Tell us about that. What was troubling to me was they were wanting to keep it under wraps. They didn't really want the information out there that they were using the um, hex cells um, to do the study. Um, they're being so deceptive in their emails, it's almost like it is in the final vaccine. Um, they're just being really deceptive and they're being careful with their words and it just made me not trust it. Vanessa Gelman, who works in Washington, D.C., is Senior Director of Worldwide Research, advocates talking to Vanessa and says, um, the question came up as an inquiry to our MedInfo group. They're asking, quote, did Pfizer make use of a cell line from an aborted fetus when carrying out any tests? This is after we'd already confirmed with the customer that no cell lines from an aborted fetus were used. Vanessa wrote, February 4th of this year. Thanks so much. Who is this information for? We, we have been trying as much as possible to not mention the fetal cell lines. So we would really like to stay focused on the first part if possible. This is what we have said most recently for inquiries received via our board of directors and through direct emails to Michael Dolston. The piece in yellow, we have tried really hard to not share unless it's strictly necessary and mission critical. The acceptable phrase you're allowed to say is the human fetal derived cell lines are not used to produce our investigational vaccine which consists of synthetic and enzymatically produced components. But then they want you to leave out the highlighted part, which is the one or more cell lines with an origin that can be traced back to human fetal tissue has been used in laboratory tests associated with the vaccine program. I mean, this is pretty, they're trying to keep this secret from the public? They don't want to stir up a mess. They don't want to have to deal with people who are upset because I think people can use religious exemptions for it, and they don't want that. I think they want uh, to, nobody to have an excuse to not get it. They've used cells from aborted fetuses. Yes, And they don't cells. want the public to know that. Yes. And, and that, that's staggering for society because of what you said, religious exemptions. Mm -hmm. And they're denying our religious exemptions at Pfizer. And this could change that because people who have religious views, mm -hmm. that certainly changes the game, doesn't it? Yes. These are powerful people and a very powerful company. They're withholding knowledge on people's approval if they can consent or not. This is Philip Dormitzer, Vice President and Chief Scientific Officer. Copying Vanessa Gelman, we have an approved answer to this question, the question being about fetal tissue, mm -hmm. which Vanessa can probably provide HEK2932. What does that mean? Heck. Uh, human embryo kidney cells, and okay. it was from experiment 293. On the other hand, the Vatican Doctrinal Committee has confirmed that they consider it acceptable for pro-life believers to be immunized. He's basically saying, why don't we just say it? The Vatican's already said that they have no excuse to not take it if it's mm -hmm. in there. Like, he's like, why aren't we just, you know, being honest kind of things, how I read it. So what's one. the difference between this approved answer, hex cells used for IV are ultimately derived from abortive fetus, and the other one they're trying to keep secret? Well, it's almost like they are doing a script. They're sticking mm -hmm. to a script, like we've had this approved, this verbiage is approved, so this is what we need to stick to, when rather they should just be making it as clear and easy to understand for the population so that they can make informed decisions on this. You're showing us emails between the Vice President of Pfizer, the Senior Director of Worldwide Research, mm -hmm. about how to couch it a certain way, because we would not want to tell the people 
that it can be traced back to human fetal tissue. We have tried really hard to not share, quote, one or more cell lines back to human fetal tissue. From Vanessa Gelman to the Vice President of Pfizer. A lot of people go to medical information, so I would prefer, if possible, we respond with what we have consistently said. We wouldn't like to have any inconsistency out there, particularly with information that has been shared with policymakers and the media. So what I gathered from this was, We've already made a statement, we have to stick to that. We can't stray because it'll make us look bad. This is the principal scientist in Massachusetts, and what happens here? Uh, she's just making sure, you know, uh, just be clear, you would like medical information to reply with the text in red below, including the highlighted section. Okay. Thanks again. And then they responded, responded with with No, I would prefer that we do not use <laughs> the text in yellow. No, do, don't be that honest, just a little honest. <laughs> Vanessa Gelman is sending this note saying, she does really not want you to, to know mm -hmm. that they're using More uh, than one. cell lines from human fetal tissue. I received last night a similar request via Laura Payne. So there are multiple executives in Pfizer asking Vanessa Gelman. So they just can't be honest with us. There's something that Vanessa says involving the Facebook campaign. I completely understand, but I just want to make sure we are responding to a legitimate request and not to a request that may ignite a Facebook campaign on this that we may ultimately need to manage. They don't want people making awareness, I guess, they of don't, what they're doing. They're afraid <laughs> of the people being aware of this. Yeah. And it really, sh this one's interesting because it shows you that they ultimately fear the people on social media knowing this. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they, this is what they fear the most. Yeah. The they want people out. to take their vaccine. Yeah. Right. right. It's interesting that, that Facebook, too, is censoring anything that's critical of this vaccine. And factual. Like, uh, when I'm an employee and I make an opinion, I get fact-checked. I mean, this, <laughs> this very interview will may be censored or banned. They're probably going to label these screenshots of the vice president, the chief scientist advisor, and your comments as misinformation. And your response to them is? I've worked there 10 years. I've been trained there. Uh, there's no way. Uh, I know the process. I love my job. I know my training. Uh, this message from Vanessa Gilman, CCing all these executives. What, what, what are we looking at here? She just says things like, thanks so much for everybody for keeping us in on the loop. From the perspective of corporate affairs, we want to avoid having the information on the fetal cell lines floating out there. As you can all appreciate, we are communicating on this vaccine across multiple fronts and managing issues that arise. In this heated environment of heightened scrutiny on every detail of our vaccine, we would like to avoid creating an opportunity to raise an issue. We believe that the risk of communicating this right now outweighs any potential benefit that we could see, particularly with general members of the public who may take this information and use it in ways we may not want it out there. We have not received any questions from policymakers or media on this issue in the last few weeks, so we want to avoid raising this if possible. Wow. We believe that the risk of communicating this right now outweighs any potential benefit we could see. They ought to put that on American currency. That's the final decision from Phil Dormitzer. The statement has, has been, been extensively, extensively vetted. vetted. Best, Phil Dormitzer, Vice President, who there was an issue with the FDA and windows being, being grayed out. My last day there, um, I took a mental health leave of absence after this from my job because I was sickened and traumatized from a lot of the things that I realized were going on. It really upset me and it shook me. I could not believe that they were blacking out windows down in our manufacturing rooms. Why would they want to do that? Well, I was wondering that as well, especially because they're rooms that there's no need for that. Like where they tell us, you know, make sure you can be seen at all times for integrity purposes, you know. And so when I saw they were blacking out windows in group lead offices and in uh, unoccupied fill rooms, I thought it was odd, so I raised it to in someone in AQ, which is aseptic quality, and I said, hey, do you know why there are blacking out windows down in manufacturing? And he said, well, the FDA is coming. So, you know, I have a friend who, you know, says, I don't know why everyone's making this so political, it's science, you know, people are so divided on this issue. What, what do you say to the people who are pro-vaccine, who are not in the pharmaceutical industry? They're just regular people in New York City who think you got to take that vaccine, stop making it political. 
it shouldn't be political, but they're making it political. The media and the government's making it political, but this isn't about Republican, Democrat, or liberal or conservative. This is informed consent on injecting something inside of you from a company that's called it a experimental vaccine. This is about when you see something that's being done that you don't think is right and exposing it. I don't know if anyone's ever done this before. I mean, I, I don't see much investigative reporting into big pharma, certainly not, not emails from executives. Are you afraid to be a current Pfizer employee blowing the whistle on Pfizer? Yeah, I, I'm a little anxious and nervous at what they may think or do. Um, I was. I was really genuinely traumatized and sickened from the things I saw and I needed to leave there. Um, but I didn't want to quit because I didn't know what to do. I, I just didn't know what to do so I just took a leave of absence so that I could gather my thoughts and really kind of heal from this information. You've taken a leave of absence but the extraordinary act of blowing the whistle on the company and publishing emails from their vice president is another step entirely. Are you, yeah. are you afraid of doing this? A little bit, um, but I, I have faith that I'll be protected or whatever the outcome is, is what it's supposed to be. So I, I'm at peace with it. I'm a little anxious on what they'll do or what they'll say, but it needs to be seen by the people because they're trying to get this to kids. And if they're being this deceptive about it, I don't feel comfortable being silent while they're trying to get it to babies who can't talk. What do you think the reaction will be to this? I pray that it unites us, that we can look and go, what are they doing? Like, why? what do they think they're doing to us? Why do they think that they can just say this to us and make us take something when they're not even honest about what they're doing or what's in it? And, and your husband here is, is on set with us. I won't mention his name, but... What does he think about what you're doing? When I started to notice some things, I'd, I'd mention them and he'd say, you know, well, you know, don't worry about it. You know, I'm sure it's nothing. And we, I work at a pharmaceutical company. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Um, I just believe in research and science and stuff like that. And so I was waiting, waiting to get the vaccine just to see the scientific results, to see how it goes. And once I showed him what I had found, and once I told him what I had found, I got nothing but love and support. Uh, and why didn't you go to the New York Times or uh, the Washington Post, which tagline is democracy dies in darkness? They seem like they do decent work. And also, why not go to Congress with this information? Well, I've spoken to lawyers. Uh, I've spoken to people, and this is what I was told to do, was to trust Project Veritas and to go with you guys by lawmakers, by lawyers. Really? Mm -hmm. Whistleblower lawyers told me that some things are better leaked to the media than doing it the other way. I think this just needs to get out there so that people can realize we're being deceived. Lawyers told you to come to Veritas. Yes. Whistleblower people told you yeah. to come to Veritas. They said if I go the route with them, the, lo the lawyers, it could be three, three years before this comes out. And that was from someone in the DOJ. So. DOJ individual told yes. you to do that under mm -hmm. the Biden administration? Uh, he was in there 17 years. He's not uh, there now, but he was for 17 years, and he advised that I bring this to you guys because it could take years, and if they're trying to get this to kids soon, it's just it's not going to be enough time. Is there anything else you want to say on the record? There's going to be millions yeah. of people that watch this. I'd like to say something to Pfizer. You guys are very adamant about integrity and making sure that things are done right and that things are always double-checked, but I'm just one person one face of many of your employees who are willing to fight this and reveal to the world what's going on. And all we want is for you to be transparent and honest with us and do the right thing.